So, so good morning, uh, good afternoon or good evening. So I will, I would like to start thanking the opportunity to present uh, this topic to you. I will briefly discuss the recently published Eurocamp CTAC guide on qualitative uh, analysis. And uh, my presentation will start with uh, discussing the types of chemical analysis the the aim of this guide and then i will go through uh, some uh, of the content uh, of the guide and the, i will close with a final message so uh, in chemical analysis uh, typically we have two types of outputs uh, we can have uh, a quantitative uh, output so uh, the result reported uh, will be a uh, a quantitative parameter such as a concentration. In this case, we perform measurements. Uh, the um, quantitative parameter can be a pH or a quantitivity. So we have other types of uh, quantitative parameters uh, representing uh, chemical properties that are uh, reported by chemical labs. In some cases, the output of analysis is a is a uh, qualitative information so it, it is uh, typically uh, a nominal property uh, a binary result that can be presence or not presence of sp a specific analyte and in that case we can use the word examination uh, to describe this type of analysis in some cases uh, before uh, a measurement you have um, uh, you have to perform a qualitative analysis. You have to prove that the analyte to be quantified is present there. And in some cases, the identification is the most difficult part of the whole analytical process that starts from the identification and then uh, ends with the, the quantification, the measurement. In this guide, um, the qualitative analyses are defined as classification according to specified criteria and these criteria should be as objective as possible to make sure that uh, during the validation when uh, we assess the performance uh, of our uh, uh, analytical method that that performance is applicable uh, to the samples that are analyzed uh, after the validation stage and to make sure that uh, qualitative uh, results uh, are reliable, we must use uh, valid analytical methods for this qualitative analysis. And these methods are valid uh, if are applicable to any adequate scope regarding type of matrices. And also, in some cases, we have to take into account the level uh, or the, the intensity of the property that is being uh, identified and also the methods um, to be valid must be able to produce uh, uh, results with an adequate quality or uncertainty uh, as you wish regarding uh, terminology this guide was developed uh, with i would say two major uh, aims first to highlight uh, the need uh, to uh, to have qualitative analysis checked for their uh, fitness for the intended use and also to present describe tools that can be used to quantify the qualitative analysis uh, performance and uh, uh, including uh, in that in that presentation uh, the discussion of the limitations of, of some of these tools the guide starts with a forward then we have scope uh, some introduction uh, it, we have a discussion on the type of qualitative analysis. Uh, it is discussed how to quantify the performance of this analysis, how to express the confidence uh, uh, of these results, how to report that information, and then uh, the guide uh, presents some conclusions and recommendations and examples of the application, application of the theory to specific tests. The guide also includes some annexes where some more details uh, about uh, uh, the tools presented uh, in the guide uh, are described and then we have uh, bibliography so the guide discussed that we can 
divide qualitative analysis in different types, depending on the inputs used for the analysis. Uh, some qualitative analysis rely on qualitative inputs, like uh, observation of color change or observation of precipitation by add, after adding some chemicals, and like detection of aliphatic aldehydes in a solution by color change after the addition of, of shifts reagent. And this type of qualitative analysis um, have some uh, specificities. Uh, one of those, uh, probably the most relevant one, is the fact that to assess the performance of this type of analysis, uh, we have to do it through experimental data. So you have to uh, get uh, samples uh, with the property being uh, identified or without that property being identified, typically known as uh, positive cases and negative cases. And then um, we we test that cases using the, the method and check how many uh, correct results uh, or false results are being reported. So, uh, and this typically must be done uh, through uh, the experimental implementation of the method in uh, for the assessment of, of these specific cases. But, uh, we, we have also cases where qualitative analysis uh, is uh, based on quantitative data. Typically, if you have an instrumental method of analysis, uh, where the identification relies on the comparison of a quantitative parameter, uh, typically the output of that instrumental method of analysis, uh, against a criteria for the identification. Uh, one example is the identification of, of trace levels of compounds by uh, GCMS, where we rely on the quantitative perimeter retention time and high and abundance ratios of characteristic fragments, and we compare with the tolerance for these parameters to decide if the, the analyte is present or not. This type of qualitative analysis uh, differ from the other ones in a way that uh, we can assess the performance not only from experimentation, but you can use other tools. Um, like database search, uh, uh, signal modeling, like we will mention in the next slide, uh, to uh, to assess the performance of these qualitative analysis. But you can even distinguish, uh, I would say, a third type of qualitative analysis that are the cases where where we, we measure a parameter, so we have form a measurement, we get a measured value, and we compare the measured value with a threshold, typically a maximum or a minimum uh, concentration uh, of your of our analyte and uh, through the comparison of the measured value with the threshold uh, we decide if the sample uh, is conforming or not conforming with that threshold and somehow we transform a measurement in a qualitative analysis this type of qualitative analysis is not uh, discussed in detail in this guide because we have an Eurocam CETA guide specifically on conformity assessments, how to handle that, uh, that conformity assessments. Uh, but in this guide in Annex B, B, we have some examples where metrics uh, usually used to quantify the performance of qualitative analysis are also used to handle uh, these conformity assessment uh, situations. The guide discusses that uh, a very convenient way of reporting the performance of qualitative analysis is through contingency tables. Uh, in contingency tables, first, uh, we have to define what is a positive and a negative case. Like I said, typically a positive case uh, is the presence uh, of, of the, the substance that is being identified negative case is uh, no presence of that substance. Uh, and uh, to feed this uh, table, uh, typically you have to uh, test positive cases and negative cases. So samples that you know that have the property or not have that property, and then see how many of positive cases will produce positive results, so we get a true positive uh, result. 
and how many cases of positive cases will produce uh, negative results, producing the false negatives. And we, we do a similar um, assessment uh, for the negative cases. In this example uh, that you see in the slide, uh, the uh, qualitative analysis method was, was tested for 233 uh, positive cases and 301 negative cases. And uh, regarding the performance uh, for uh, positive cases, we got 228 positive results, so true positives, producing a, a true positive rate of 228 divided by 233, 97.8%. And if we look now to the performance uh, of the analysis uh, when we have negative cases, we conclude that uh, we got one false positive uh, uh, from 301 tested negative cases that produces a false positive rate of 0.33%. These contingency tables are very nice to report performance, but uh, performance uh, is not direct information on your sample. Uh, does not is not characterizing the, the 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 specific sample that is being tested, like we will see uh, in the next uh, uh, few uh, seconds. Uh, this contingency table can be uh, can be built on experimental data, but uh, we can also quantify performance uh, using other alternative ways like database search. Uh, let me give you an example. If you want to identify microplastics uh, by uh, micro infrared uh, spectroscopy. Typically, you take the spectrum of the particle and then you compare with the reference spectrum from different uh, uh, polymers. Um, and we can test uh, the criteria used to compare spectrum from the particles with the reference uh, particles. We can test that criteria by uh, comparing the spectrum of the particle with the, the spectrum of all different uh, polymer types. And to find out the chance that you misidentify uh, the polymer from that uh, uh, identification criteria. This uh, database search uh, way of assessing the performance is, uh, I would say, useful for some cases, uh, but as a, as a big disadvantage that typically database is not a representative of the diversity of uh, of uh, samples that that uh, uh, are studied uh, by this uh, identification method, so uh, we can use this uh, tool, but we must be careful uh, on the interpretation of that information. Another alternative to quantify the performance is by uh, data modeling. So, what can we do uh, if we have instrumental method of analysis supporting the identification? Uh, we and if we are able to develop models of the the, the signal that is being used used for for identification, we can predict the chance that the signal uh, from a, from a sample without that have not not the property uh, being identified that that signal will will uh, produce a false results produce a false positive. We can also use that tool in some cases. Uh, very useful when we have very selective uh, uh, qualitative analysis methods, but uh, we must be very careful how to model signals. In the guide, it is also discussed how to express the confidence in the results. Uh, the, one of the first metrics that is being reported is likelihood ratio that you learn from a uh, Bayes uh, theorem. If you have a positive result, uh, an indication of a positive case, uh, you can calculate so-called likelihood ratio of positive results, that is ratio between true positives and false positives. And look, this ratio is only express uh, performance. Um, 
uh, is expressing performance and um, not exactly direct information on your sample. At least uh, uh, if you do not assume nothing, no assumptions, uh, you, you conclude that this is only performance uh, information. Uh, so the big advantage of this, of this uh, uh, metric is only requires performance data uh, to calculate this the, this metric. Uh, another advantage is is the easy to consider uh, the use of independent evidences. Imagine uh, if you support the identification of a compound uh, trace levels of, of pesticide in foodstuffs based on retention time and the uh, mass spectrum uh, mass uh, spectrometer information. If you would like to hydrate you uh, by using retention time or by using mass spectrum separately. Since these are two independent pieces of evidences, likelihood ratio uh, of identification based on both of these tools is just multiplying the likelihood ratios. The disadvantage of this uh, of this metric is related with uh, some of the advantages, I would say. So the disadvantage is, uh, is that this metric uh, uh, does not allow to characterize the analysis sample uh, specifically. And uh, the interpretation of this uh, of this uh, likelihood ratio value is also uh, uh, not easy, although there are some tools that can help you. Some tables that allows you to convert a likelihood ratio in what we call a verbal equivalent uh, of the of how good the evidence collected is. Another metric that is mentioned uh, in the guide is the posterior probability of, uh, of uh, a case, in this case, in this slide, a positive case. And this uh, metric uh, is uh, very convenient uh, in a way that express uh, information on the sample, uh, tells you what is the probability of given that the result is positive, that the case is in fact positive. So gives information uh, exactly on the sample, but uh, uh, we need uh, so-called prevalence information uh, to uh, get to this uh, metric. So we need to know before the analysis, before the test, what is the chance that the sample will be positive. So this is the, the, the prior information, the prevalence, that that needs to be considered in this model. If you have this prevalence, we just need to use this nice formula based on likelihood ratio, based on performance of qualitative analysis, and get the posterior probability that is a probability uh, uh, that the uh, that the, a positive result uh, uh, is in fact uh, true or correct. The guide also discuss uh, how can uh, the identification result, qualitative analysis results be reported with these metrics that express the confidence on the result. Uh, example three from the guide, we have an example where the cocaine presence in a sample is reported together with the likelihood ratio, uh, that uh, the ratio if, between true positives and false positives. And uh, in this example, together with the <coughs> sorry, together with the likelihood ratio, it is reported so-called equivalent, a verbal equivalent uh, associated with that likelihood ratio that uh, makes likelihood ratio value uh, uh, easy to understand. Example four present an example of the uh, presence of gasoline residues in fire dairies, where this is reported with a posterior probability, probability uh, of that result. And of, in this case, 99.998%, where uh, this um, performance parameter here more, is more easy to understand. Their direct interpretation is, uh, is easy, although we need prevalence uh, information uh, to fit this model. The guide. Uh, Closes with some recommendations. The first one is that uh, uh, you labs should assess 
the most critical fault is also rates to make sure that the, their analysis are fit for detailed use. Uh, if the qualitative analysis depends uh, very much on some uh, parameters uh, that are under control, uh, we must be sure that the parameters are adequately controlled using adequate uh, tools to control the, that parameters and using adequate tolerances for that control. If labs decide to report the uncertainty of qualitative analysis, they must be sure that uh, that information is correctly uh, understood to avoid any misinterpretation. Um, this is particularly relevant when uh, uh, we have a very selective analytical method based on very low false uh, result rates and uh, that rates were estimated from few tests, making the false results rates uh, uh, not uh, particularly statistically sound. So we must be very careful in reporting that the information, uh, uh, at least we must clarify how good the metrics are. And then in some cases, if the reported inf information uh, uh, relies on performance information that is not so statistically sound in that case uh, it can be it can be a good option to report the result as inconclusive or insufficiently certain the guide uh, presents some application examples uh, uh, of the theory to identification of three levels of compounds by gcms uh, identification of compound by infrared spectroscopy by immunosay technique and uh, it also discusses uh, identification of genes by qpcr uh, virus uh, by uh, pcr uh, allowing the the reader to understand how these tools can be used uh, to solve specific problems let me close my presentation with two final messages uh, so first of all let me tell that the quality qualitative analysis working group that that produced this guide wishes that the guide is useful uh, for the community that is useful to identify uh, qualitative analysis that needs to be improved and uh, let me also take the chance to invite your recommend CTAC members to join the working group and to get involved in future projects of our working group so thank you very much for your attention.